Brother Reed. <laughs> Sorry to be a little hoarse tonight, yeah. But I guess I just preached too hard. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> the first time I've tried to speak that way for an amount of years, I guess. But our Lord knows all things, so He'll work all things together for a good morning. I was happy that Brother Reese could speak in my place tonight. And now we want you all to be very much in prayer. Glad you're out. Shows that you love our Lord, or you wouldn't be here on a rainy night like this. And even some people were standing outside. So it shows that they love the Lord. And when a desire comes to people's hearts to serve the Lord like that, certainly God will not forsake them. God will certainly bless them. So I trust that the night will be a great night, that many of you who are sick and suffering will find deliverance in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Reed. I just found out one of the main things that made me hoarse. <laughs> I, I can tell it already. I might as well say this. <laughs> it was that fan back there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to it. Ordinarily, a person as bald-headed as I am, <laughs> a man who's bald-headed naturally has a real hard scalp. The, the pores of the skin close up. A barber put some stuff on my hair, tucked the hair out so my, see my soft skin's just as soft as it can be and all the pores are in there. The least bit of perspiration, oh my, it's got me that quick. A barber put some stuff on to take dandruff out. He did. Hair too. <laughs> so, the pores, if it, the pores is closed down like natural, like nature would do it, it wouldn't bother me. But it isn't. The pores are still there. So somebody said, well, if you go over some Thomas system or something, they give you a treatment. I said, yeah, I don't have too many treatments now. <laughs> so it's, it's all right. So I found out last night I would want to stand still just a little bit. And no one will ever know the strain that's on you when that anointing comes down. Every muscle I stand here, even to the socks and my shoes can be wrung out with perspiration just standing here like that. That's a strain that you're under. Every night when I go home, usually I just stand under a shower for a long time, kind of get my feeling back like that. It just, just goes through an awful strain. It's kind of hard to understand that. We can't understand it. We just have to believe it. That's all. God is not to be understood. He's to be believed. We can't understand it. We just believe it. <clears throat> we have two more nights according to our schedule to be with you, dear people. I know Monday night is kind of a hard night. Maybe tomorrow night, the Lord willing, I hope to be able to speak for you. Tonight I want to read some scripture. And in this scripture, I want you to listen closely. It's found in St. John, the first chapter, beginning with the 44th verse. Now, Philip was of Bethesda, a city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, 
Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Shall we bow our heads just a moment for a word of prayer? Our Father, we know in Thy Word as believing children all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Now we've gathered here tonight for no other purpose but to magnify Thee and to get sinners to seek Thee to call upon Thee while they can that perhaps You may have mercy upon them to save them from sin. That's our first motive. Second, dearly, many of your children are sick and afflicted. Many are desperately in need. Some here tonight, no doubt, with such diseases as heart trouble, cancer, tuberculosis, will die pretty soon if you don't come to their rescue. Your servants, the doctors, have done all they can do. But they can't seem to stop it. Just as the brass serpent in the wilderness had to be lifted up when Moses was taught in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Wonderful doctors. But the serpent was raised up for a compound reason. That they might be forgiven and healed. So help us tonight, Lord. As thou didst say here on earth, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent, same way be lifted up the Son of Man. Same reason, forgiveness of sin, healing of the body. Then if the serpent, being the shadow, had healing in it, how much more does the antitype have? Both salvation and healing. You said, as Moses, so will I be. We're trying to point that to the people. And now thou hast sent some into the church, apostles, secondarily prophets, gifts of healings, working of miracles, teachers, many other wonderful gifts that you, when you ascended it on high, you led captive, captive, and give gifts unto man. And we're thankful, Lord, that Thou hast seen fit in this last days to restore these gifts unto the church, that we might cause the unbelieving, educated world, like it was in the days of Noah, before the antediluvian destruction, how smart, how they could build those pyramids, Phoenix, embalmed bodies that look natural even to the day, great things that they could do smart. But by the foolishness of preaching, you save those which we believe. God, be merciful tonight. Help us to work with every tool that we have for the saving of the household of faith. For we ask it in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Handkerchiefs which are laying here. Let's see. I would just like to call your attention while I can't talk just a little or tonight, but I'd like to call your attention to the remarks of this religious man who came to see Jesus of Nazareth. When Philip found Nathaniel. As soon as Philip was converted and had seen what Jesus was doing, it was in the early days of Jesus' ministry. And when he saw what he was doing, he hurries off to find a friend of his. Now, isn't that just simply true to what it is today when we find Jesus Christ, we like to tell our, our friends? I wonder if you can hear me all right back in the back of the building. Can you hear me through this mic? Thank you. Over in there, can you hear me all right? Thank you. Thank you. 
And when he went to his friend, his friend was a believer in God. He was a religious man, very fine, cultured man. Nathaniel, Jesus declared it when he found him. But he said, come see who I have found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Why, Nathaniel, knowing what a polluted and city that Nazareth was, full of robbers, thieves, he said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, come see. In other words, just come see for yourself. That's the best way. Now I think of any man will approach God as Moses did with his shoes off, whatever it might be, in reverence. Friends, tonight I believe if any man will come in this day or tonight reverently before God and say, now I'm not going to take any of my thoughts. I'm just going to open my heart to you, God. And you reveal yourself to me. I want to see. I believe God will reveal himself to the people that wants to find him. He's never disappointed anyone. And then, could you notice these two friends going along? I can hear maybe Philip say to Nathaniel, Now look, Nathaniel, this man is praying for the sick down there now. For Jesus... His fame had not yet got great into the country. He was just starting out. And he didn't claim to be some great person. He gave all the praise to God. He said, it's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. And he said, now, if you notice him, he was very humble and a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. He didn't claim to have any scholarship. But his simple teaching confounded the, the Pharisees and the scholars of that day because they only taught as one from theology. But Jesus seemed to be able to have favor with God that would confirm what he was saying. Now there's what truth is. When a man says something and God backs it up, and when he finally arrived at Jesus, standing in the prayer line, let's give a little drama. Say, Jesus is praying for the sick. Many coming along and he praying. He seen Nathaniel coming down along the line. And he said, Behold, an Israelite, in whom there is no guile. If I should express that to, say, I turn around and say, This man standing here, if I'd never seen him, I'd say, Here's an honest man. A Christian believer. Truthful. Well, that kind of astonished him. The Israelite, Nathaniel. He turned and looked at him. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi, or teacher? Rabbi is interpreted as a master or teacher. Like we say today, reverend or elder. Something. Whence knowest thou me, Rabbi? Or here I'm a stranger to you. How did you know I was a believer? How did you know I was, as we'd say today, a Christian? Why, Jesus said, before Nathaniel called you, or before you come to the prayer meeting, I saw you under that fig tree. Now let's bring that in terms of today. Now what would a scholar of today say? Well, that man is a mind reader. He is, uh, that's mental telepathy. Or some name like that. And they didn't do any better that day. They pinned the same thing on him. They said, he's Beelzebub, the chief of the fortune tellers of the devils, you know. But not Nathaniel. Nathaniel was a just man. When he knew that there was something he had never met before, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He fell before him. Why, he said, Nathaniel, you believe because I told you that I've seen you under the tree? Why, he said, you'll even see greater things than this. 
And then Jesus, in all of his ministry, he never at any time gave glory to himself or said anything about himself that was great. He always magnified the creator of his being. Now, Jesus, in flesh, was deity. God overshadowed a virgin and created a blood cell. We all know that the, the child or the, comes from the male sex. The germ of life of anything comes from the male. Like a hen can lay an egg, but if she hasn't been with the male bird, it'll never hatch. An old mother bird can lay a nest full of eggs. Springtime now. But if she hasn't been with the male bird, they're not fertile. They'll never hatch, no matter how much she warms them and hovers them. And she can stay on that nest until she gets so poor she can't fly off. But they'll never hatch, they'll rot. That's what I think is the matter of the whole lot of our churches today, friends. We just got a nest full of eggs that's never been germatized. We're just warming them up and calling them church members and things. We need to clean the nest and start over, don't you? If, it had, if you hadn't been with the mate Jesus Christ and been born of a supernatural, you can't believe the supernatural. And when a man's born of the Spirit of God, God's a creator. And when part of God is, I'm a part of Charles Branham. He's my father. He looked like me, or I look like him, rather. We're about the same size. And a whole lot of features, because I'm an offspring of his. And if I become an offspring of God in my soul, then my soul is like something on the order of God. It believes the supernatural. It believes for anything. See what I mean? Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. See? All right. Then if a man's ever been in contact with God and really been born again, you talk to him about divine healing, sure he believes it. Certainly. You believe in miracles? Sure. See, he's a part of God. He believes anything can happen with God. And he's not superstitious, but a man who's just got theology, while he say, oh, I believe the days of miracles is past, he pushes it off with some kind of a big gutter pipe to run it off his steel. He doesn't want it. What a pity. Well, God said, we'd have him, and we got him. We can't stop it. The Bible said we would have him. So they're here, outnumbered us by many. But if you'll notice when Jesus is here, he never, they called him a fanatic, called him crazy, and called him a devil. Why, well, he said if they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call his disciples? But watch his life when he went along. He talked to a woman at the well one day, told her just where her trouble was. She went and told somebody else what he had said and caused the whole city to come to God. Philip went out to the same city, baptized them, and they had a wonderful time. Watch him. I see him pass through the pool of Bethesda. Crippled, lame, twisted, blind people laying there. Walk right through the crowd till he found a man laying on a pallet with sugar diabetes or some disease was going to hurt him. He'd had it 38 years. Healed that man and went on. While the Jews questioned him, St. John 5, 19, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, whatever thing the Father doeth, he showeth to the Son. He'll show you greater than the healing of this man that you may marvel. See what I mean? Now he said, The things that I do Yet a little while, listen close, a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Yet ye shall see me, who are the believers? You'll see me, just that, no. You shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Same Jesus. And I as his servant, and you as his servant, and we as brothers and sisters, offsprings of God, and I declare I unto you that Jesus Christ is in this building tonight. 
Could you imagine the joy in the hearts of those disciples who went to Emmaus after talking with him all day and yet didn't know him? Then all at once he made himself known to them by something he'd done just the way he did it. And they rejoiced and was happy. Could you imagine the joy they had living with the resurrected Christ on that wonderful Easter Yule time? If you're not in that state tonight, you're living under your God-given privilege. You have a right tonight to enjoy the full blessings of all that the apostles had, all that was in the early church will remain in the church because all that was in the church was Jesus Christ. And He promised His Word and the things that you see done here night after night is only to fulfill that which is spoken of by Jesus Christ the Lord. I'll be with you, in you, to the end of the world, and the things that I do shall you also. Believest thou this? You believe that to be the truth? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Great Master of life, we come in the name of Jesus, thy Son, to offer thanksgiving to thee for thy word. We can think of the apostles before they were made apostles, Peter, Fishin one night, Andrew, the sons of Zebedee, and how they toiled all night and it took nothing, sitting on the banks washing their nets, very much discouraged. Then they look coming down the bank and here come a lovely person, a few men following him, and see the women leaving their washings. The men stopping the ox in the field, coming down to the banks of Galilee to listen at him. There was something different about him. He had authority from God. And after his speaking, he had borrowed one of their boats, which he was to use as a pulpit, a little old dirty fish boat, the greatest pulpit. There he spoke to the multitudes. Then after barring the boat, he said, Thrust out, Simon, into the deep. Let down for the draw. Let down for the draw. We've dragged through here all night. There's nothing in here. But at thy word, Lord, I'll let down the net. Oh, God, there it is. At thy word, Lord. If there's none there, God's Word will put something there. We know that's truth, Lord. You wouldn't say there was some there unless you was able to perform that which you had spoken. There's many men and women here tonight, Lord, no doubt, that's drugged through every hospital and every doctor's office in the city and around about. They went everywhere trying to find help. They're sick, Lord. They're dying. Demons of sickness is eating your life away. Heart troubles killing them. They went out of the cold sheds. They'd been out in the bushes. They'd been to the altar praying. Had their lovely pastor, different ministers to pray for them. Still seemingly can't catch on. But let this be the time that they'll say like Peter, At thy word, Lord, I'm going to let down the net. I'm going to trust you right tonight. This is the night. This is the time. From this night, I'll trust you. I'll set my affections on things above. We know that thy word says that you're the high priest sitting at the right hand of his majesty to make intercessions upon our confession. What we say that you've done, that's what you do. But if we not, do not confess it, if we're afraid, then you can't help us. So we pray, God, that you'll give each man and woman, boy or girl in your night, courage, real conviction, faith. 
that look up there and see that Son of God sitting there in His majesty, the power of His Spirit moving in His church, then not be afraid. Say, by stripes I'm healed, I go believing it. Then you're the high priest, you'll start confessing that in heaven, just when we confess it here. But you can't do it until we first say you've done it. For it's a confession, and that means say the same thing. We have to say what you say about it. We've already been healed, so we accept it. Send the angel of God, Lord, the great leader of the Holy Spirit, that guides your church into all truth tonight. Help your poor, unprofitable, unworthy servants standing here, Lord, as I try to represent this to the people. For I ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Then he shared. Is that right? Amen. He said, wherever two or three are gathered, no matter how small a group, two or three, I'll be in their midst. One anything they ask, they shall receive it. Now that's either right or it's wrong. Jesus said, if you abide me and my word in you, you can ask what you will, it'll be done to you. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it. That's, well, what's the order of the word now? You believe now, you receive it, it shall be given to you. See, he can't do nothing for you until first you believe it and say he's done it. Let me let that soak real deep. How many correctly understands that? Hebrews 3, 1. No matter how sick you are, what about it? You've got to first believe he does it and then confess that he has done it before he can even go to work on it. How many knows that? When you come to the altar to pray to be forgiven your sins, it isn't because you cry. It isn't because you confess. It's because you believe. And when you believe and stand up and testify, now watch. You go outside after you accepted Christ. The old crowd says, you're no different. There's nothing different. But you believe you're different. Well, if you go say, no, I guess I didn't get it. Well, you just got another trip to the altar coming. But when you believe you have, you say, yes, I am. Then you believe you're a Christian. You can't show nothing that you are. But you believe you are. You believe you are. And then when you confess that you are. And when you confess him, and he confesses you. He's a high priest working on what? Not on your crying. Not on your repenting. Not on your faith. But on your confession. No matter how much faith you got, it'll never do you any good till you put works with it. Amen. For faith without works is dead. Is that right? Amen. Just like this, the body without the spirit is dead. Then when you say, I believe Christ, then accept it. Go saying so. Then you believe you're a Christian. You say you're a Christian. You act like a Christian. You associate with those that are Christians. And it works righteousness. After a while, everybody knows you're a Christian because you hold your confession. You act like it. You go down the street not saying, well, I miss, hey, I, maybe I'm a Christian. No, you go down and say, I am a Christian. You're bold with it. Then he's bold with it. See, he can only do as you say because he's the high priest of what you confess. And he's there before the presence of the majesty to make good anything that his redemptive blessings calls for, his sacrifice. That's what he paid for in standing there to make good to you anything that you say that you accepted what he's done. What did, was he done? He was wounded for your transgressions. Is that right? Let's quote it together. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The trust is up on him. And with his stripes, we were healed. Is that right? Now, any of those things, if you're weary, upset, fretting, nervous, sick, sin, whatever it is, when you accept that from your heart, go to confess it and saying it's right. God's right there to make it right when you go to confess it. But if you're afraid to say so, afraid to act upon your confession, 
No matter how many times you're prayed for, you'll never get well. You've got to believe it first. See? He's the high priest of what you confess that He has done for you. How many understands that? Now raise your hands. That's right. Only when you say so. Now if you are prayed for and you say, Now I believe. Yes, sir. Now you can't say you believe until you really do believe. If you do, you're just you're you're doing something not right. You can't say you believe until really in your heart you believe. But when you firmly have prayed through and really believe, then you can say, I believe. Then you can accept it. And now remember, he's there will make good anything that you believe in your heart that he has done, and will confess it. Then everywhere you go, testify of your healing. Say so. Believe so. Tell others so. And friends. It'll never fail. I've seen sarcomas cancer heal with it. And I know that it... You know what a sarcomas cancer is. All right. We got dozens, yes, piles of letters like that from that type of cancer. Files full of testimonies, doctor's statements. Lame, halt, blind, cancer-ridden. Everything that can be thought of in a late way of diseases been healed. Faith. Now, preach the word. That's one way. And God has other gifts. Now, may the Holy Spirit come tonight and declare to you that that same Jesus that resurrected from the dead is here. And may He send His angel to His humble servant to manifest His divine presence to you. God bless you. All right, sister. Tell him all that is within him. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thine iniquities. Who healeth all of thy diseases. I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Was it a disappointment, Mother? I seen you had you sat on your prayer card wasn't called. Is that it? You, you're what? You wasn't in that number. Oh, you wasn't in it. Well, I'm. I have no way of knowing, you know. I tell you what to do. If you believe me to be God's servant, and with all your heart, and will accept what I tell you about Jesus Christ, He'll heal you. Poor thing, I've seen her walk back with a real disappointed look on her face and sit down. She had a prayer card and she did something with it. I thought, poor woman, she maybe feels it. Maybe she was left out. No, no. No. God leaves no one out. These people here, them standing in that prayer line, it's not one sign that any of them will be. Not a one of them. There's not one thing can be done for this audience here, what can be, or for these here, what can be done out there. See, it's for every one of you. You believe that? What if I'd stand here by the Spirit of God and tell you what's wrong with you? Would you believe? Would you be? I don't know you. But what if I by the Spirit of God, if I be anointed with Christ's Spirit now, the angel of God, which you see here, he knows what's wrong with you. If I tell you, would you accept your healing? You would do it? You have stomach trouble. Is that right? If that's right, stand on your feet just for a witness. This, that's right. Now you can go on home and eat once you want. On down. Have faith. Now, the Holy Spirit puts me and all spirits here subject to me now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now be reverent. All right. What's this? How do you do?
<clears throat> we strangers, lady. Do you believe with all your heart? You do. I, I would, uh, if there was anything that I could do to help you as a minister, I would do it. Or I feel sorry for people who are sick. But I'm, the only thing that I could do would be point them to the Lord Jesus. He's the one who does the healing. Now, if you and I are strangers in this life, but yet I know that we are brothers and sisters or you are a Christian. That's true, isn't it? Now, isn't that just about what our Lord said to Nathaniel, an Israelite, indeed? May I say this more to you then? As a Christian, you're not only a Christian, but you're a teacher making Christians. A minister. Is that right? I see it's a pulpit speaking the word. You're plagued with an evil spirit of nervousness. It causes you to have much trouble. It hinders you in your speaking. Well, I'm going to tell you what did that. You had an accident one time in an automobile. Is that right? That caused you trouble to start. Do you believe you're in His presence? Do you believe the same one that spoke to Nathaniel standing here somewhere now? Well, go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Get well. strangers to we are. And I I do not know you. I've never seen you. But there is someone who's near here now whose presence that you're aware of, that there's something near you that that's not you. And he's the one who knows all about you. He's the one who fed you all your life and knows all about you. You're also suffering from nervousness, aren't you? Yes. Very nervous. One thing, it's a time of life for you to be nervous. Menopause. That's common among women at your age. May the Holy Spirit speak something else that would be, that wouldn't seem so natural as you'd think psychology to look at you and say, well, her age would do that. I never picked that up through psychology. You know what I understand, buddy. Is that true? Now, watch what, you, you're fearing something because you're kind of afraid you've got cancer. Isn't that right? Yes. Say you've had an opera you've had many, you've had several operations. Isn't that right? I see it moved from the hospital back, back, and back. I'm going to say at least four or five times you've been in the hospital. Five times. <laughs> Here's another thing. You have a growth in you now. Just been examined. That growth is in the rectal, is it? Yes.
be reverent, and have, is this your patient? Excuse me. Many times when the meeting is getting along now to the, that you, you don't realize, friends, you're two worlds. And I'm not beside myself. I, I'm all right. I know what I'm doing. But it just upsets you. No need of trying to explain it. You can. Now be reverent. You're the man, are you, sir? I believe we are strangers, aren't we? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? You do. If I be his, his prophet, and his spirit is near here now, you've come to me for help. And I, I could only help you in what he'd give me to help you with. As far as healing you, he's already did that when he died for you. But the only thing that I could do would be help you to have faith to believe something that might be said or done that would cause more faith for you. Isn't that true? You suffer with a stomach trouble. Is that right? I see you refusing different foods as you're passing before me now. And they got something around your arm at a doctor's or it's a blood pressure. It's instead of it coming up, it's going down. You have a low blood pressure. <coughs> that is true, isn't it? That's gone from me. Here, here's another thing. One of the greatest things that you have need of now is Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Isn't that right? You have never yet become a Christian. See, the same Jesus that told the woman at the well that she had did wrong, so is he telling you now. Don't you want to accept him now, as you will now, as your Savior? That you might know your home. Here's something I seek. That you might understand. Having you got a wife that's, that's got arthritis. Now I see her... You take, she's a, a short, kind of heavy set woman. Is that right? And she wears a, a two piece suit that's gray. Is that right? Is that true? Your sins are forgiven, you friend, my brother. And you go now and eat what you want to, and God be with you. Also strangers, aren't we? I have never seen you. But do you believe that you're standing in the presence of His Majesty? Not your brother. His Majesty. I am just His servant, as that bulb is a servant to the current. You understand? You're very much distressed, aren't you? You're weary, scared, because you have a growth. Tumors grow. And that growth is in your breast. Is that right? It's in your left breast. Is that right? Come here. Oh, Lord creator of heavens and earth. 
author of everlasting life, giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this poor mortal who is now waiting for healing, ready for an operation. Oh, eternal God, bless her and help her. Heal her in Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. Now, do you believe now that you're going to live? God bless you. As you have believed, it will be. He said, if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It turns light around you. I'll be good with you. You believe with all your hearts? Believe that God makes the people well who has faith in Him. You have a growth also, don't you, sister? <laughs> that growth's on your neck, isn't it? Hers, the life that just went out of it, and it called, screamed for mercy, and was hanging up above you there, a dark-looking cloud. I seen it, another one over top of you, screaming to the other one. Put your hand on your neck and say, Lord Jesus, I accept my healing. And may the Lord be merciful to you. Be great your name. Be faithful to be reverent. Come, mister. Do you be we strangers? I'm getting very weak. Would you, if the Lord Jesus should just speak to me and show me something, what is wrong with you? Would you accept your healing, my brothers? You are. You have diabetes. You said you'd accept your healing, didn't you? The Lord be with you. Would you do the same thing, lady? Heart trouble you have. How go it, Lord? Would you believe the same thing, lady, if I told you what was wrong with you? You have stomach trouble, isn't it? Go with you. Let's say praise be to God. Let's just bow our head and offer prayer, if you will. Lord Jesus, come and be merciful to us. Lord, give us of our trespasses and sins. Bless us everyone. Through Jesus Christ's name. Lord bless you now. Go and may you make you completely God. God who knows what's wrong with you knows what the future will be. All right, let's say thanks be to God. For the child you're coming to, do. you believe with all your heart. You want to get over the answer? Just go off and say thank you, Lord. That person sitting right there with bronchitis, sitting right back there in the back. Back at the end of the row there, you can raise up too if you want to and accept your healing. The Lord Jesus, we want you when he healed us from here with that. Do you believe, sir, if God will reveal to me what's wrong with you, you accept your healing? You have kidney trouble. All right. Do you believe, sister? You've thought many things was wrong with you. It's stomach trouble, and you have fluttering around your heart. A lot of times you thought you had heart trouble, but it's the it's when you lay down, you feel it worse. You see, it's the nerves. Gas goes through the tubes to your stomach, which may, or to your heart, which makes you feel that way. It's a nervous condition. God has healed you. Go My sister, you want to get over the female trouble? Go and accept me. Come on, 
Tanrı seçtiğinde. Believe with all your heart. If you believe, you can receive. I said, heart, you felt funny, didn't you? Got the other on the end of the road. Yes. You want to get over a heart trouble? You do. You can stand up and accept your evil. You, sir, you also had sitting right there. You had a heart trouble, too. Stand up. You got healed the same time there. God bless you. That's right. The Lord bless you, my brother. You believe God? <laughs> little girl, look this way at me again, honey. The other little girl there. Look here, sweetheart. Just a minute. I seen the light hanging over the little door because it's on that lady there. It's you. You believe me to be his prophet? <laughs> You have the lady in the white looking dress on, kind of turning gray. Don't you have some kind of a breaking out or something? The doctors don't know exactly what it is, do they? I see him shake his head and walk away. It's on your legs, isn't it? Something like eczema. If that's right, wave your hand. The Lord be with you and heal you. Have faith in God. Billy, this is the lady. Lady, look this way. You believe me to be his prophet, his servant? 